Tonight, we are foregoing our general mentorship to bring back somebody that's actually been a part of Notary Stars for at least a year and a half now. Um, I consider her a pioneer when it comes to uh, online notarization. I do want to make this disclaimer right up the front. It's not coming from her mouth. It's coming from my mouth. Um, I am a big believer in putting investment into bringing people on Notary Stars that are advocating for the notary community, that are doing things for the notary community that um, really matter. And if you're here or if you're watching the replay, um, thanks for watching the replay. Thanks for tuning in. I know we have a lot of Florida people right now that are not able to tune in because of the hurricane. So we send our best wishes to them and we know you'll be safe. We'll all be praying for you to make it through you know, this time and anybody affected by the hurricane. Uh, but I, what I'm talking about is people who invest in notaries and invest in the community uh, with the technology that they're bringing because we have been really plagued by technology and we won't get into that conversation tonight taking things from us that really um it, it's happening left and right in our community uh plugins for title and escrow um signing agency platforms that take way too much of the cut signing agencies you know get blamed for that but it's really the technology behind it uh, that really takes a larger cut from the signing agent industry Tonight's all about Ron and Cyberize It with Amy Sites is probably one of the best platforms out there. You guys know I have two and I tell them all the time. Amy is definitely one of them. Her technology is really for notaries, built by a notary, and really plugs into this industry really well. Um, after this conversation, I just want to say up at the front, um, I really want you guys to support Cyberize It. I really want you guys to turn to Amy uh, when it comes to looking at where the future can go because there are other companies that do not have our best interests at heart that look at us like numbers and i know for sure that amy has the best of intention with her platform else first of all everyone is invited only few have shown up so she's definitely one of the ones that have shown up from the beginning i'm going to turn it over to amy now and let her give her presentation tonight we're going to look at the updates at cyberize it and we're going to also talk about biometrics Thank you so much, Ronnie. It's always a pleasure to be here. Um, can you hear me okay? Yep, we can hear you just fine. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I am super stoked. I've got some new way of thinking that's rolling out. So you're going to see something that's not even live yet. I had my developers finish up the fine tuning things just for this presentation tonight. How cool is that? So if you don't know who I am, my name's Amy. I am an Ohio notary. I've been a notary for over 20 years. I'm a loan signing agent and a Ron. Um, I got into this industry early uh, 2021 was my first time doing a Ron and I loved it. Uh, it was phenomenal. I started out with a platform. It was very expensive. And I realized if I was going to keep doing this, I needed to find a better way because we all know software is expensive. I looked around and I kind of fell into the boat like what Ronnie did. I looked at a platform and they're not here no more. So I can say this with no qualms. Um, I looked at a platform that ultimately was stealing our clients. And that made me mad. We went through all the trouble marketing and training these people and getting them comfortable with the process only for them to take my client away from me and me lose money. And I ultimately found the owner's phone number and they got a phone call from me. <laughs> Needless to say, that owner did not think we would be where I am today. And I'm very happy to say our platform has been open, uh, open to the public. We opened J July 1st of 21 to other notaries. I've been working the platform since March of 21, but we now have the largest footprint in the United States, open in 33 states and the territory of Guam, believe it or not, we've expanded into the territories. And it's phenomenal. Uh, I absolutely love it. I still do Ron work every single day. I still get my most of my money from being a Ron. So um, I'm super stoked about this. And I hope that you'll see my system I, I will be upfront and honest. We'll, 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 we'll pull all the bones out of the closet. My system's not the easiest. I expect the notaries to understand software. 
but my system gives you the most flexibility once you know it. Now, I when I say that, I've got notaries on my platform that were Rons before they got on my platform. They still struggled, but now they've increased their Ron transactions by more than 30%. And that's solely because they can offer services to clientele that they couldn't on any other platform. So by opening those doors, learning that technology, they've seen a good return on their investment. And that's what I'm out here for. Or that's what I'm striving for is to make it better for you all. Um, oh, the last thing is we're not just a software here. We, I want you to kind of think of this. We're a community. Our notaries support each other. And if you run into a problem where you can't validate, which we'll get into a little bit more here in a little bit, but we are there as a team. Uh, we do all kinds of support, not just from me and my team in the, in the office, but from the other notaries on the platform, you, you have that solidification uh, across state lines. So, Ms. Anyway. Amy, do you mind if I say one thing just to back that up? Yeah. Um, I will tell you, you know, Travis and I here at Unlimited Inc. on the Unlimited Inc. side of things, we reach out to Amy all the time and get almost like immediate responses. But one thing at Notary Star is you guys know if you've been with us since the beginning or been with us since the end, when we when you first on board, we say take all the training and then start using the phone number because the training is meant for you to understand the platform. And so when you go through and you actually do the training for yourself. If it doesn't stick, I always tell do it two times, three times, and then start using that phone number. I would love to create a world where we could hold everyone's hand and just guide them to where they're supposed to be. Uh, but there is a lot in this industry, and I, I want to say this with love. There's a lot of can you just tell me how? Uh, because I'm busy. And here's the thing: we are all business owners. I'm a business owner. Amy's a business owner. You're a business owner. And I am no more busier in my day because I have a staff than you are in your day. And so the, the difference is, is I can delegate it to somebody, but in the beginning, I couldn't. And so I say this with love is in the beginning, learning a platform, any platform, but learning Cyberize it as well. You want to go through those steps of learning it first and then using those channels to help guide you there. And that's not meant to put anybody down because I'm the king of, can you just give me, Miss Beth will tell you, I'm like, can you just give me the answer? And she's like, no, you gotta, you gotta read or look at it. Or I told you this. Um, I want to put that out there as well. Cause Amy said it her way. I just want to make sure you hear it from me this way as well. Cause I respect what she just said. Well, thank you. We do get a lot of uh, things. What I do ask everyone is if you've got a general question, we ask that you email it. And I know that sounds kind of put off, but I I want you all to understand, I'm the only full-time staff member here. And I'm usually the one responding to you, but I'm also doing sessions and I'm helping people in live sessions. My daughter, Bethany, she's my other admin. She works the standard hours and then randomly a little bit more, but that's it. There's two of us. And we answer to a lot of people. So if it's general, send us an email. I can multitask like you can't believe. I can shoot four or five emails out every couple minutes. Um, but if you're in a live session, you take precedence. You get a special phone number. You send us a text message. And we answer that text message 24 seven. I drop everything for those text messages. And I can multitask with those as well. I've had to support like six to 10 sessions at once where people were asking me questions. But getting us on the phone is very hard. Um, I, I actually had to limit that a little bit because it was getting to the point where we couldn't get anything done because people were calling. So we used to answer the phone much more readily, um, but in Ronnie's, prime example, I did have to kind of back that off a bit. So you can get us on the phone, but send us a text first and we'll call you. <laughs> and we do, we do. Even Rose can say, she can send me a text and I'll be on the phone. Kina can say it. And those are just people I see that are in the chat right now. So I think even Lorna. Um, all right. So 
Let's take a look at the platform. If you've ever seen our system, this screen doesn't look all that much different here. But in the sense of a platform, it typically, they all do the basic functions. They connect you through ID proofing. They bring the client on with an audiovisual component and you electronically sign the document and you have a journal at the end, all right? What we've done a little bit different here, so we'll just hit new note. Well, let me back it up. So in our system, remember me talking about the client retention? Hold on here, I'm gonna to delete this off there. That was a test. Um, all of our notary accounts have this very special website. Every single notary gets their own website. And what this does is you can put this in a call to action button on your website and any client that signs up using your call to action or your URL is instantly put into your client list. So see, this is my client list here, okay? So if I were to show you how quick this works, I'm gonna use that link and, oh, I gotta log out, hold on. That's what I get when I have multiple web websites open there. And we're gonna say, this is Ronnie at Notary Stars, because I want you to see this in real life. And I hit sign up. And it's thinking. All right, now it's being a pain, hold on. So the test database, I might've uh, used up all of my emails in it. Yeah. All right, well, I can't do that, sorry. Oh, why it's not letting me do that. All good things always screw up when you're demonstrating, you know that, right? Anyway, that's exactly what editing is for. <laughs> In the real world, it would have instantly worked, but it would have put them right into my client list here. And in my client list means that every time that that person with that login comes back to the platform, it will always come back to me to be the notary. And you could also see, let's say I already I know this client profusely and they don't ever have to ID proof with me, I can override their reasoning and they never have to go through ID proofing and I never have to code it. So if you have personally known, you can do that instantly here. Um, know, Amy, can I interject on that and just make sure that we're clear? Um, you, If you're doing real estate transactions, you have to check with your title and escrow company if they allow personally known. Fidelity is one that will not allow it. And I love your face on that one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'll show you my face too. <laughs> uh, if you can see it on this, they don't allow it. Um, so you, if you're doing Ron transactions in a general notary appointment, it's up to you because you're going by your state laws in a real estate transaction. If it is personally known, you do have to ask the client if it is accepted by the lender. Mm -hmm. Very, very true. Um, 98% of the time, it's getting closer to 90, but we'll say 98 right now. All real estate transactions are gonna want you to go through the full knowledge-based authentication, ID credential analysis for verification, no matter who it is. And that's limiting on some people because not everyone can get those. And, you know, well, anyway, so now, we're going to go back here to the dashboard and we're going to start the notarization. Again, this hasn't changed much. Upload your file. Very standard stuff, right? One thing that we do offer is you can have up to 10 people go through the ID proofing in one session. And some people have asked me if I ever had to do this. My largest one was eight. 
And because of the platform I was on, this was before mine, I had to do it in three sections because I had one translator for every session. So I couldn't put everyone in there at once. So having that ability to validate 10 people through ID proofing on all of them was very beneficial to me. The first four of these is included with your transaction fee. Five and up, you have to pay $3 extra. And that's only to cover their, their ID verification. If you're putting them in there as personally known, there's no charge for five and up for those individual people. Keep that in mind. So if you're, if you're doing a transaction with five people and you're bypassing one of them or overriding one of them, you would make them number five so that you don't have to pay any extra money. You see where I'm going with that? Does that make sense? So John Smith is the only one who can do KBA on the testing database. So he is going to be our client. And you'll see down here, we have ID proofing by. In this instance, because I'm logged in as a non-biometric enabled notary, I cannot click on biometric. This prohibits me from being illegal, all right? I don't want anyone to accidentally go through the wrong verification. So if you're not a biometric state, then you always are going to have KBA questions or you can override and you could enter your reason. So if you were doing like oath of credible witness and we would say Jane Doe, because you always want to be able to list the exact reason why you're not validating and you want to put in as much detail as you can. So if Jane Doe was presenting a human ID for John Smith, that's how I would enter that as my reason. And then if I ever got questioned, I would be able to say, well, Jane Doe was his witness and it's right here in my journal. If it was personally known, personally known, uh, worked with for 12 years, you always wanna be able to put as much detail in there so that if it ever came into question, you'd be able to say, and you could put as much in here as you want. You could say, we worked at this company from this year to this year. I, you could be as OCD as you feel like you need to be, all right? But in this instance, we're not gonna override. If you need witnesses on the platform, we did not get, go away from this. It costs $5. But that $5 is paid out to those witnesses that claim it off of the job board. So we, Amy, as, yeah. I do have a question about witnesses. I yeah. know that they, this goes out to notaries at some point with cyber as it from what I understand, but I want to ask your opinion on a wrong platform. Does the witness have to be a US citizen? No, however, there's a caveat states so the 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 secondary witness this is not a credible witness but the secondary witness like the signing witness in states like florida it says that the witness must be located in the united states so they don't have to be a citizen but they do have to physically be in the borders okay a question for another time uh and i no shame in saying that we outsource a lot of our scheduling to other countries um, so uh, that was one question I had is, could our schedulers actually be witnesses on the plat on, on a platform like this? And that would vary by state of the notary performing the act. Okay, good question. Uh, I, well, good question for me, but maybe yeah. not for everybody else. <laughs> yeah, no, and that, and that, you know, that's one thing that I tell everyone. Um, let's say I'm on vacation. Well, you know what? I'm coming to the NNA next year. All right. And while I'm in Scottsdale hanging out with Ronnie, someone pings that they need a witness. I can be that witness. I can log into my notary profile on here. I can claim that witness job and I can sign off as a witness because I'm not performing a notarial act. Ronnie could be the, the notary doing it because he's in Arizona. But because I'm not in my state, I can't do the notarial act of it. But if I'm on vacation, I could still make money. And that's kind of the big thing. Now, if I'm on, in Grand Turk or I'm on a cruise boat, 
I can't be a witness only because there are some states that do limit my physical location. And I don't know what notary is going to have the job. So I can't say, oh, it's a Ohio notary and they don't have that limit. But, oh, it's a Florida notary. They do. Um, there's no delegation there. So you have to be in the states to do the witness aspect here. Make sense? But it is a good way to make us some extra money while everyone's asleep and you're just sitting there bored, you know? Yeah. Anyway, you just enter that number and you can put as many witnesses down here as you want. But remindful, that's $5 per witness. If the client was bringing their own witness, you would add them up here. Okay, they're, they're considered a signer at that point. If we're providing it on the platform, it's down here. Now, we offer the ability for the client to pay on the platform, which is really great for the Arizona notaries who can only charge $10 if memory serves. Um, but for other states, or if it is a, a, a real estate transaction, sometimes titles mailing you a check later. In those instances, the notary just pays the transaction fee. If you were sending it, like say it's a one stamp document and the client's going to pay on the platform, the client would pay $36.99 and the notary walks away with $25. And it doesn't matter which state the notary is out of because Cyberize it charges that. The notary is not charging it, the platform is. And that's what the customer agrees to when they agree to the terms of submitting their payment. If you are billing outside of the platform, you're only going to pay the minimal fee. So like here, it's $11.99 for the minimal fee. And just to give you a, 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 a kind of apples to apples comparison, and I'm not going to name platforms, but I want to give it in perspective here. This includes four signers, four ID verification that includes KBA, it includes four ID credential analysis. It includes five documents and it includes one notary stamp, but it also includes 10 years of storage. There, a, a comparative platform, that same transaction is going to cost over $40 if you fill all of those four places up. So that's where we really try to not nickel and dime you, that's not what we're here for. We're here to be a resource. So to give you an idea there. Um, Kelly, I, I, I would say if you were in Puerto Rico, yes, you could witness because it's technically a US territory. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and pay this. And then we've got a few more customizations, but I wanna get to the new features. Are you ready for this one? So we've got our notarization ready to go. And one of the things that uh, I always hate is you get in here and you realize you typed out, you typoed their, their name wrong or you typed their address wrong and now they don't get questions or they entered, they, they gave you their date of birth and they did it in the backwards format. So it was 0305 of 88, right? And you're thinking, oh, cool, March 5th of 88, because that's how we think of, of dates. But really, their birth date was May 3rd of 88. And now you got to start the whole transaction over and pay again, right? On, on almost every platform, you have to do that. This is one of our brand new features. If, this, if that happened, you just click Add a Signer. And now... I can add a signer. And I still get um, the ability to pick the, the verification method. The documents can be 10, me 10 megs each. So now if I just refresh my screen. She wasn't lying about multitasking. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> I have great peripheral vision. My kids hated it. All right, so now 
I've got two signers and you can do this up to the 10 that you're allowed in a session. If, if you, if you're in here and you're like, Amy isn't eligible for questions. Now, if you can do credible witness, you could add the credible witness now. And then I would say override. And I would say oath of credible witness, Don Smith. And now, boom. How cool is that? I, I am super stoked about this feature. It fixes typos. It adds in the extra credible witness mid-session. You get to save the transaction. I love it. All right. So this is a new feature. Instead of getting multiple links, the client gets one stagnant page where they can go through. And if they have issues, this gives customized contact information for their personal notary. So it doesn't tell the client to call me. It tells them to call y'all. <laughs> because it's all about you, right? Now, going down here, they get their ID quiz. They get two tries within two minutes, five questions, and they have to get four out of five correct. And I aced it. No, actually, I got four out of five right. Now, now you could see, and this is a glitch, and I apologize. Again, we rolled this out just for here. But I get to see as the notary, I get to see the score. So when that client fails and they say, well, I know I answered all those right. I can say, but it's telling me you only got two out of five right, unfortunately. Okay. So um, that gives you a little bit more power, a little bit more control when you're dealing with a client. So you could be a little more authoritative on the matter instead of going, oh, I'm so sorry. I have no clue exactly what happened, you know? Then after they've passed, they'll scroll down and they can see all of the examples of the ID. And then it'll ask them, are you currently on your smartphone? If they say no, it's gonna send a link so that they can open it in their email to upload their ID. If they say yes, it will open right on their phone or computer. And then they upload their ID. Now, with this aspect, the, this is one of those things where it's really great to be able to have the biometric aspect as an option, only because if they do fail their questions, you need a way of fixing it for the client. You know, there's, you run into so many issues. I had one today, <laughs> an older couple, and they got questions. And he sends me a text and he goes, those questions were too hard. I'm too old for this crap. <laughs> and it's like, you can't express to them, well, I don't, I can't do anything now. You failed two quizzes and now I'm stuck. And now you have to wait 24 hours because you didn't feel like doing it, right? No, that's not what I did. I said, you know what? I get it. Don't worry. Let me get you somebody else who can help validate you in a different way. And I moved it along and sent it forward, okay? And I'll show you that here in a minute. That's when having that biometric aspect comes in handy. If, if you can do it, you have a secondary option for us that can't, for those of us that can't. But Ronnie's completely right. There are so many misinterpretations ideas of it, and it is definitely up to the receiving agency. So just like a receiving agency can say, I don't want to do an online notarization, even though it's legal, and they can reject your document, even though it's legal, and there's nothing we can say about it. It's the same way with title agencies and underwriters. It's, um, it's really an education piece, because I've done 
multiple fake transactions and more people fa more people passed fraudulently with KBA than they did with biometrics. And when we're talking about biometrics, we're not talking, I'm gonna stop share this for a second so you can see my face. We're not talking um, fingerprint or facial or uh, eye scans, retina scans or anything of that nature, you know, no DNA here, seriously. What, we're, what they're doing is they're taking their ID and yeah, I know it's a Dave and Buster's card, but you get the idea. So they take their ID and they upload the image of their ID and it, their ID has a picture of them on it. And then they take a selfie. And what the system's going to do is it's going to analyze the picture to their face. Are the eye sockets the same? Is the bridge of the nose the same? Is the ear to the nose the same kind of spatial difference? And it's going to give a, a score between zero and 100%. If our system, if they score 80% or higher, then it's considered to be the same person electronically, artificial intelligence, right? Because we all know at the end of the day, the buck stops with the notary. It's your job to make sure that the software did it right. Now, that all being said, with the downside of biometric technology is if someone has recently had reconstructive surgery or they have bandages on their face, things of that nature. I can also tell you that I've lost a hundred pounds and my passport photo doesn't look like me anymore, but it still looks like me biometrically. It still has the same span. It still has the same jawline. I could change my hair color. I could wear a hat. That doesn't make a difference. But if you do have some kind of major impact to the face, then that will make a difference on their scores. Did you have a comment, Ronnie? I do, um, and I, I thank you for letting me, because this is something that I want to be very careful about. And are we going to go into this further later in the session, or is this where we're talking about it right now? Totally up to you. Okay, so the only thing that I want to get out to the notaries is we had an instance uh, recently, and it did come from Amy speaking about things that got into the notary's ears. So I want to make sure that when we get a new information, we know how to use new information, right? Uh, because that's the important thing. And it wasn't Amy's fault. It was the notary's essential fault for saying, hey, you can send this out and do it by biometrics because the signer was signing KBA. First of all, biometrics have to be accepted in your state. Okay. And if they're going to outsource it to another state, that title agency needs to know it might be another notary in another state. So the best conversation you to have if you're being outsourced the signing in the first place is to say, let me talk to my assigning agency. Don't go back and tell a title or escrow officer or a lender, you can do this because they're gonna have a bigger picture, bird's eye view, or they should, of what you can. You can say, there, this may not be at my particular platform at the moment, if you're not on Cyberize it, won't allow this, or we can do this on a platform like Cyberize it, and we have notaries that are on Cyberize it, and we can use them, but don't tell them that it can be done. Say, let me see if there's another avenue. I want to teach that conversation as we're all learning this so that you don't get in trouble, because I had to go back to that notary and be, why the hell did you tell this escrow officer that it can be done, because it cannot be done in the state of Washington, and it's not even possible at this moment. This was six months ago. But it got us in trouble because they're like, well, the notary said that you can do this. Why can't you do it? And I got a little upset. I was like, okay, we're not listening. We're, we're trying to just save the day. But saving the day is sometimes going, let's slow this down and let's do this right. So with biometrics, you need to know if it's available in your state. And then you need to know if the title agency will allow it. And then if they don't allow it, can it be done by another notary in another state that will allow it? And they have to go to their underwriters and say, will this be allowed? It's no different than asking, can I use a credible witness? Because every single credible witness signing that we do in Arizona, if it's not a general notary appointment for unlimited ink, we call title and say, will this lender allow a credible witness? We know the title agency will. So on a signing, a seller signing, we might tell you, go ahead. But on a lender, we have to get title's approval because they have underwriters and then lenders have underwriters. 
remember we're one cog in many wheels of this cloth that make it spin and i just wanted to make sure we pause at this moment and i don't want to interrupt miss amy because plethora of knowledge but we need to when we get to that point where we have to choose on a lender or a seller signing unless you're the company that's facilitating all their signings we always go back to the assigning party whether it be the signing agency title or the lender that's assigned us and make sure we ask that question. And that's all I wanted to make sure we got into the matter. Oh, and that's extremely important. Um, I can't flip every single transaction. And truth be told, I get transactions because one of my major clients is out of Florida. Florida can do biometrics, but I get a lot of their overseas because the underwriter won't take a biometric, but they will take credible witness. And Florida can't do credible witness online. So they can't use Florida notaries for that. It's illegal for them. But here in Ohio, I can do credible witness online. So they use me. And just having those different abilities doesn't mean it's perfect for every transaction. You can't always save the day. All right, I, I would love to say we could always save the day, but I will say if there's a will and a way, we will get it done. But sometimes other forces come into play and you can't. So when you are being contracted by a third party and you are going to move it to a different direction, you need to make sure that you have their blessing. One, because you were assigned the work that other notary wasn't. So you've got to make sure that they're cool with you handing it off. And then two, to make sure they're cool with using the alternative technology. And I don't say that alternative is not bad. It is completely, equa it is equatable to doing KBA in the law. However, in the eyes of the beholder, it's considered alternative. And they may not always like it. Now, I will say that MISMO, which is the software certification for RON platforms, to perform real estate transaction, it's done by Mortgage Bankers Association, is writing it into their recommendations that platforms should be able to offer that, which will help with the transition of real estate and things of that nature. And as I keep talking about it more, even more states are interested in it. I've met with Alaska and Tennessee and Washington, D.C., and all of these other places to talk to them and Ohio, to talk to them about the fact that biometrics is actually more secure than the knowledge-based authentication questions. Because let's think about this here. We all have parents, right? If you were to ask, be asked, where has your mom lived? Where did your mom live in 1985? I'd know where my mom lived, would you? You don't have to like answer, but the idea behind it is, uh, what color was your mom's car? It was a Toyota Camry. You probably know the color of your mom's car, but the idea behind it is you could, most fraudulent transactions take place between family members because they do know each other and you can't fake biometrics. I, I tell you, my only one that could fake biometrics was my daughter, the one who helps answer the phone. I keep her, I keep her close, right? You keep your enemies closer, right? <laughs> um, she passed as me and she passed as her sister, but I couldn't pass as her and her sister didn't pass as her. It was very obvious that we didn't look like her, but apparently her, her features are so close to ours that it, it was a good enough match. It was not a high match, but it was... It was enough that we would have, we would have passed her on, you know? So anyway, it's interesting. And, and I just want to interject here. There was a Washington notary, or actually it was a Virginia notary for Washington um, that did a signing for a really large company and it was not biometrics. Um, it was actually, they failed KBA and this the notary kept going and wound up doing it by holding up the ID these tools that happen before you get online and we go over, I went out, did a whole scripting thing about holding up the ID and verifying the front and the back and those sorts of things. Um, these tools like KBA and biometrics are to be a fail safe for you prior to holding up that ID. 
long story short, it was a sister who signed an entire seller package for a, um, a deceased sister. And they looked enough alike in the ID that it passed the notary and she failed to yield to KBA failure, signed those documents electronically on her platform, which most platforms, like if you're working for Amrock, it'll lock you out if they fail KBA, some platforms will not. And then she proceeded to film it and do it. And title may not review your film until six months later, just to make sure it's insured. But that notary is now never going to work again because she signed a deceased signer and they released over $250,000 to a sale that they are never going to get back. And it was caught days after the transaction. That is, that is, I just wanted to interject that these things that Amy's talking about are not your defining factor. Just because someone passes KBA mm-hmm. does not mean they get to go through with the transaction. Just because they pass biometrics does not mean that they get to go through the transaction. Recently, I had a signer who passed KBA, but they uploaded a torn in half ID. How it passed to go through the Nexus clear sign, I have no idea. And it was a paper version that said, do not use for identification purposes. And it was torn in half so they could get the front and the back, but it wasn't even the real back. And I was like, I'm sorry, but you just tore a paper in half that says do not use as identification purposes. And, you know, it, I, I'm not doing this. And Amrock was like, well, you could. And I was like, no, this is, it, it, there's a state law here and I would be breaking it. And then they supported me when you use the fact that this is the law. Never try, we, we, you know, at Notary Stars, we do say be problem solvers, not problem creators. But the law is the law is the law. Like there is, and, you know, unfortunately in a court of law, I don't know, or I didn't know is not an excuse for obeying the law. If you're going 120 miles an hour in a 50 mile an hour zone and you kill somebody, you're still subject because you were breaking the law in the first place. So not knowing the law has never been an excuse of breaking the law. So just remember, these are tools to get you to start the notarization process, not the tools to allow the notarization process. They're stepping stones. Yeah. You know, I always say ignorance does not equal innocence. Ignorance of the law does not mean that you're innocent from being guilty of the repercussions. So you you definitely have to understand all of those different aspects. And there are some states that can do other verification than just this. Um, and, and, you know, just, and just to err on the side of caution here, in Virginia, if they failed KBA, there are other alternatives, including other than biometrics. Now, obviously, this person didn't do all that. But many states have many different features. And there are aspects of it that they can do. And it's legal for them. But you have to know what you're doing. And you have to understand the verification method. And you have to really, really, really follow your state statute as well as understand what the receiving agency is wanting to see from the transaction. I have a lot of title agencies and signing services that they don't care. They're like, you get it done legally and it's up to you. I don't care. And they never ask me and I never tell. (laughs) So, you know, it's one of those things you've really got to know the client and then understand where your freedom reigns, you know, how much trust do they have in you? How much quality do you bring back to them so that they look good, you look good, and the client's happy, and it's all legal. But more to what Ronnie was just saying, just because someone passed all of the verification on the system does not mean they're going to pass the third visualization aspect, and that is your eyes. Your eyes on that camera, you have to be the one making sure that they are who went through this process. And at the end of the day, here's the kicker. And this is something probably many won't ever tell you. If it ever comes down to play and someone ever questions a transaction, the platform's not liable. You are. At the end of the day, I'm going to repeat this because I want everyone to understand the implications here. If someone fraudulently gets through the ID verification, the automated verification, no matter what they're using, and you sign off on it, I'm not getting sued. 
you are because you put your name on that document. So you, I, I want that to sink in, you, right, Ronnie? That's that's a huge aspect, right? That is absolutely true. And this is why I have been encouraging notaries um, to also purchase cyber insurance uh, for fraud uh, in case you are tricked. Uh, they will cover you per transaction. The company that I use, and I get nothing for saying this, and I'm not endorsing any insurance companies because I am not a licensed insurance salesman. I go through a company called Hiscox. They are in multiple states. They may not be available in your state. But if you are performing Ron, now is the time to invest in cyber insurance. Um, you can get it added on as an additional policy. They will do it separate from your errors and emissions if you are doing it through them. If you don't have Hiscox, it's H-I-S-C-O-X. Uh, if you don't have it, um, but it's something that I require. And we have it for the signing agency because we do use Ron's. Uh, but most signing agencies are not carrying it at the moment. We are actually educating our title clients that if they are working with other partners, which some of them do, that they should be requiring, you know, a per occurrence um, type of transaction. And we've we've got that, you know, from Hiscox. They're never they're too large of a company to ever get them to come to Notary Stars. Uh, but I will send you to them. And if you can't get it through them, talk to your general liability. Uh, first, or excuse me, your errors and emissions first, and then your general liability company to see if you can get, because there is going to be trickery. And I, I have to tell you, we haven't done enough, Ron, yet. Nobody has as many transactions as we think are happening. Still more are going by paper. Uh, we are all pioneers when it comes to Ron. You know, we are all pioneers at this moment. And, you know, everything that we can learn, this is why these conversations are so important. Um, before we move on, Miss Amy, <clears throat> I've been sharing your tear sheet <clears throat> that we filled out that from the information that you sent us a, a while back. Um, we've got that on the screen right now. If you are needing that, uh, it is under the platform comparisons on Notary Stars as well. Uh, this is information that came directly from Miss Amy. It's on the screen right now. But I wanted to know, do you need to share your screen again? Because I have to unshare mine for you to share yours. Yeah, I, I do. But I just want to make mention, uh, we added New Mexico to the list of approved uh, states. Okay. So yeah. I will have uh, Glory update, up, uh, update that to, tomorrow morning. She doesn't come back in. She's gone and I'm not no going to. She does all the design stuff. Um, I would love no. to say that I made something that pretty, but I didn't. <laughs> But yeah, I was going to finish out the demo um, and show my new journal. We all know the notary journal is a big part of uh, an online notarization, right? So I'm not going to get into like a whole bunch of this, but, you know, so I hit accept to the, take the notarization. And if we needed an added a witness, we would have a button here that we could pull witness in from the platform. I didn't put one in, so we don't have one there. We mentioned about looking at the, the signer's ID and you want to make sure that you can see their ID on your, your system. Now, when this actually opens up, it's because that's a fake ID, the real ID is that big when it opens up on our screen. So you could see it in very granular detail and you can see it for everyone that uploaded their ID not only the front, but you can also see the back. It's gonna be the same image on here because I uploaded the same image both times. And you would be able to do that with all of them. And the spinners never stop spinning. That's to make sure that you look at it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, one of those ones that I want everyone to look at this, right? We offer a little bit of features here. This hasn't changed. You can change the language of the speaker or uh, the instructions based upon your clients, because we do have bilingual notaries or we have them like in Arizona and Ohio that can use translation. You simply drag and drop, whoop, drag and drop signatures on the page, depending upon your state and you all these different fields and send for signature. You would never hit send until all of the signers are in Zoom. And we use Zoom, but on a, the audio visual session. And it's an important factor to make, sh make sure you understand. You never want anyone to sign the document until you know that you've performed the notarial act. The notarial act is not done by any software. 
the, the signing's done by the software, but the notarial act is done by the notary. And that's where I validate you. I say, hi, uh, my name's Amy. I am an Ohio notary, and I'm so excited to have you here today. Thank you for getting through that ID verification process. Let me tell you, now it's easy. That was the hard stuff. You get to sit back and relax. So let's get this going. And first things first, I need you to show me the ID that you used to validate a minute ago. And they're going to hold up their ID to the camera and they're going to bring it up close and, you know, move it around so you can see it. But I'm going to check it on my computer screen to make sure it's the same ID. And I'm going to be looking at that. Okay, it's really good to have dual monitors. If you can't tell, that's what I have. And I can see that. I can look at the video. I'm like, cool. All right. Awesome. And I'll go through each person that way. And then I'll be like, okay, it looks like today we are signing documents for the sale of a property located in the state of Florida. Have you had a chance to review these? Do you have questions? You know, and, and I'll, I can itemize, and every state's a little different. So, like, if you were, a Montana notary, a Montana notary would have to list the name of every document verbally and list the notarial act being affixed to that document verbally in the video. Every state's a little different, but it is important to understand that you need to be looking at your state laws to make sure that you're being compliant on your video session. Now, once you've done all of that, and you've placed them under oath. Again, and the software does not place them under oath. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm? Blah, 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 blah. At that point, the notarial act is done. Now you're just signing the document. And now you would hit send. And that's going to give me an error because I didn't tag it properly. Once this is all signed, and I'm not going to go through the process of signing, literally they get an email, they can share their screen, you watch them put their signature on, you can also watch it here, which it may or may not work, but um, yeah, it's working. So I can, I can validate when people sign down here on the right and see their signature on the page once they've signed. I'll do one. So I got the email. The client would be opening this email and they are going to sign. So I just want you to be able to see one on the document over here. So I've signed. Oh, hold on. I didn't realize that. Well, this is a great example and that's, that's a bad example. Anyway, they would go through and sign. I can refresh and see that they opened it. See, it's, it tells me that she opened it. But the big difference here is when I hit complete notarization, we've upgraded our journaling. So if you're dual commissioned, you could actually use our platform in both states, depending on where you're physically at. And that's really helpful if you're in like Virginia, Maryland, and uh, well, and soon DC or Pennsylvania and New Jersey. I see that a lot, but you can go in here and you can say, okay, so I'm Ohio, I'm in Franklin. We do support the use of remote ink signatures. So if you were doing a ink, ink signature, you could select what type of signature was being put on the document. Again, ink signatures online are not legal in all states. I can go in here and I could say I had one acknowledgement, but I also had on the same file, I also had one jurat. And I also had one signature witnessing. I can be very detailed as to every notarial act that I did. And it doesn't matter if it was all on the same page. Now, you probably won't see three different notarial acts on one page, but it's a great visual that you can add these in. This is the additional fee that the system's going to charge the notary. 
an extra $2 for this because of the extra stamps. Remember, it only comes with one. But I'm getting paid outside of the platform and we're gonna say it was a seller side. Uh, I'm gonna get $100 for this from the title agency. So I'm gonna document what I'm actually getting so that it's in my journal and I can document exactly what I charged for this transaction. Now, you may not put your loan signing in the same category. So you could say, I charge $25 for the stamps and $100, and I don't know if this will work or not because I didn't test it, but $100 for the whole session. However, you wanna customize that there. Or you could just say $25 and itemize it further in the notes on the next screen. Miss Amy, can I make a quick interjection of why that would be important? Yeah. So for electronic journaling or journaling, uh, we'll be talking about this uh, next month on Notary Stars Unlimited about how you can write off your notary stamps. Notary stamps are not uh, taxable. They are uh, tax deductible. So if you are notating properly at the beginning, you won't have to go back and redo these things in an electronic journal, you may be bound to what you put in there at the very beginning. So if you are interested in learning that, we will be talking about it next month with a uh, notary assist. But what she's telling you, she's scratching the surface of a very important topic for your taxes and how you put things in. So I'm glad that we, uh, you let me interject on that. Um, keep following for more information. We're not gonna peg Amy on that tonight because she is not a tax professional, uh, but she did scratch the surface uh, for a very important topic. Yep. And, and that is, and that's a great uh, aspect. Next, many states require that you have the physical location of that signer. So I am a Florida property owner. I have Florida ID, but I'm in the military and I'm stationed in China. You need to be able to notate that while I signed this document, I was in China. But in order to get to get the KBA questions, I had to put the Florida address because I don't live in China. I'm just visiting. And most journaling on, on the Braun platforms, you can only put one address in. Now we've given you the option to add, well, it's not even an option, it's required now that you have to put where that signer physically was during the session so that it can be in your journal export at the end. So that is all required fields on this page. And once you do, you hit submit and it will process, but I'm not done. This is now the journal of what you just created. In, in the soft format. Now we have extended journal entry. And now every document has its own transaction number and you can go in, you can enter those transaction numbers so that you can pull those audit trails. If you're in a state, so we, we've itemized this, this journaling requirement. So you know state by state if you're on our platform. If you have to put that you're storing the video somewhere other than the platform, you can document where you're storing the video. In Texas, if you do a power of attorney online, you have to have the agent's name and address in your journal. So we've given you a space to put their name and their address in your journal. If you're in different states, you could still do this, but Texas, it's required. In states like here in Ohio, I have to have the image of each signer's signature in my journal. So what I do is I take a snip of their, of their signature and I upload it. So now I can tell what their signature looked like and I have the date and time stamp of when that signature was affixed to that document. And finally, we've given you a notes area. And this is really great for notaries like in Florida, where you have to notate if they were a vulnerable adult or not. And that goes into general notary work more than loan signing. 
But if you're doing a power of attorney or a will online in Florida, there's a specific level of questions you have to ask. And you're able to now enter anything you want about this session in here. It could be that you asked those questions and what they scored, or it could be anything of any nature. If something's missing from this aspect of journaling, like there's one state that required that you notate the uh, actual ID number off of their ID, but in other states, it says you cannot ever notate the identification number. So we weren't able to make that an automatic field, but you could add that into that notes area to be 100% compliant. That, that's where you would add it. And then when you're done, you hit save. Now, keeping in true with all journaling, as soon with electronic journals, it has to be locked and uneditable. I could not change any information. I cannot add any more information. It's a one and done submission. Now, I'm not going to hit export only because, well, I'll try. Um, I don't know that it'll work though. They're still figuring out how to make it work seamlessly, but, oh, here we go. Maybe, maybe not, it's thinking. Anyway, it'll export into a PDF format and you'll be able to see everything that's on there. Oh yeah, see, it's, it's still thinking. Um, but anyway, that, that was our big aspects on there. Now, that all being said, I also want to show you what it looks like when somebody fails their KBA and you're not biometric. So just bear with me. Let me throw this together here. And guys, while she's looking that up, I just want to let you know, I know we're getting up on the six o'clock hour. Um, the same will be done soon and we'll do some question Q&A. But I do want you to stick around to the end because I have an important message that we won't be filming at the end. Um, so just stick around for a little bit longer. We've got great information for you, but I, I do have a message for everybody. All right. So they get two tries. One. Two. Now I see they got zero out of five. I as the notary can override if I legally am allowed to. I could still add a signer or I could transfer it to the job board. And then it only goes to a biometric notary in the in one of the states that allow it. There are eight states that allow it right now that I found. I'm still working on it. I might be able to add a ninth one after I get clarification from their secretary of state. So I'm excited about that one. But that's what it looks like for a non-biometric notary. Now, a biometric notary would never get transferred to the job board. It would show that they failed KBA, but it's going to automatically take the client through biometric. If they can't go that route, it's up to the notary to reach in and say, oh, wait, hold on, wait a minute. We got to do something else. But um, for the client, it's seamless. They don't even know when they're running to problems because it's not their it's not their problem. It's our problem. It's our validation aspect. So I wanted to show that screen here. But yeah, that that's pretty much the big changes. Um, I'm stoked about them. I think it'll result in more captures than anything. One of the other aspects I didn't go into was the fact that you can um, you can uh, sorry, I saw a question in the chat and threw me. You can customize and you can if you send out a document that was incorrect, you can actually correct the tags on it. And just really quick here, I seen a question about the Florida notaries and they were Googling the questions. We actually have an intake form for them. If you go to notary.cool, Lorna, and scroll down into the free resources here, you can click on this and it will give you the quiz. It will give you the quiz. And you can go through and actually 
ask them the questions and put your email address up here and it will it will email the answers to the notary so the notary has it in writing that they performed those those questions so if you're running into that uh Lorna hopefully that helped um just a quick side note here this is our <laughs> this is our I tell everyone don't lose your cool go to notary.cool okay that is our training database that is your one one stop spot for everything how to access how to get to the adobe manage your subscription attend our zoom sessions attend a training class um get a quote you can quote okay how much is it going to cost me how much is it going to cost the client if they do it on the platform what am i going to walk away with if the client pays on the platform all of these different free resources, uh, blank documents for you to practice with. I have this huge question and answer session. I mean, it tells about anything and everything all the way to software skills, anything you could have questions on. All right, I, I've worked hard on this. I think Ronnie probably is like, oh, <laughs> uh, calendar of events. But in addition to all of this in our onboarding, this is where we house all of our training and you get all of this different aspect, but I'm just gonna shortcut it to our state specifics. So I'm gonna shortcut through these. We went through and we're gonna do Arizona because no, Ronnie's in Arizona. I went through and itemized out the state law for each of these categories. So, what kind of digital certificate do I need? All right, cool. What kind of ID proofing can I do? If you personally know them, can I do a credible witness? What does a credible witness mean? How does it work? Um, are there any document restrictions? Some states like Maryland, they can't do a will online. Some states like Ohio, I can't do a deposition online. So that is all itemized in there. Can I do RON or RIN? You know, is it all electronic or is it ink signatures? Can we do an apostille online? Judy helped me do the research. Uh, well, Judy did most of the research. She shared it with me. <laughs> and then what does your electronic journal consist of? And we did one page per item. So you can actually look and see everything that you have to have in there. Um, and it, how long it has to be. You know, we've done compliance certificates for every state. So it tells you what do you have to add in and we put it in red so that you can see this, okay? I, but I am, I'm not gonna go through all of these, but I wanted to show you why we, we really love our training program because we do, we really did dive deep into all of that. But in addition to that, we've got handbooks that you can download. On top of that, we've got enhanced videos, you know, Ron training, signings, we've got marketing tools, you know, I've got a video on how you can save money on Thumbtack. So uh, if you're interested in that, I've got it on there for our team. But the all of this different kind of stuff is in here. And it's all available. And we add stuff to it almost every day. So Miss Amy, right. uh, we had a question that was, what is that website? Is it notary.cool? Yes, it's notary.cool. Okay, I'm just going to go to it and then put it in the chat as well. Um, at this time, I'd like to ask anybody that's got a question for Amy specific specifically related to Cyberize It, um, if you wouldn't mind, uh, and I did, it, it is notary.cool. I tested it out. I'm going to type it into the chat. If you have a specific question for Amy, Amy at Cyberize It, please go ahead and raise your hand at this point virtually and we'll get you in a queue. 
Um, at the end of that, I will have a special message where I cut the recording because um, I don't want to put it on recording out there. And I, uh, you know, you guys know us. Sometimes I can go off on a tangent, uh, but I think it is an important message. Uh, do we have any questions? I know that Miss Beth, maybe you might see some in the chat. Have you seen anything that we need to address? I know Kelly Gimmon earlier uh, posted a question. She wanted to know about Puerto Rico because I think there's something going on in there. Yeah, for a witness, um, I I wouldn't have any objection to that. I think that would I think that would hold up as a witness standing in Puerto Rico. I don't think that that was so. her question. Uh, she said, "Let's see, resident of any state." Okay, I think she was talking about the witness. So she does have the in the back of her head. People, she's all over the chat. Um, Miss Kelly, was that your question? I can see your face. Was that what you were asking about? Okay, perfect. You okay, really I did see uh, the state of Washington. We already are in the state of Washington. Um, I'm just combing the chat, and if you guys have any yeah. questions, there are. Remember, this is a safe place. There are no yeah. dumb questions. Uh, we welcome all questions here. Doesn't matter if we went over it. I know that somebody asked earlier. They missed the first part. Yes, this is recorded, so it'll be up if you missed the first part. Uh, Michelle from uh, Florida. Michelle yeah. came from Florida. Scott Michelle, give me one second. Can I answer one question in the chat before I lose it? Sure, of course. Um, Someone asked about if it was 20 signatures, 20 note, 20 notary stamps. What kind of cost would that be on my platform? So that would be $19 plus $11.99. So who could do math really fast? Not me. So zero, okay. carry the one. So it'd be $30.99 for that whole transaction. And don't hold anybody on this platform. We do notary work and, and run work. We don't do math, but it's close to that number. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it down. I was I I I my scratch okay. pad. I, always, <laughs> I did old school math. <laughs> Go ahead, Michelle. It's good to see you. You too. Thanks for all the good information. I heard you say something quickly earlier. Um, I always thought that Arizona was the only state that would allow notaries to um, the use of a translator, so they weren't uh, directly communicating with the signer. You mentioned Ohio. Mm -hmm. Is there another one? Are there others? I'm sure there are, but I don't have that on the top of my head. Yeah, I didn't um, know Ohio could, so we can send them to you. And mm -hmm. Just so you know, yeah, Ms. Um, Beth, Ms. Beth does have a crib sheet for all of the notary stars if you are in a state. Uh, you can email us at help at notary stars and she can help you with your states if you know if you need to know and i know tomorrow we'll get flooded <laughs> and <laughs> after posting this on youtube we'll get flooded but that's okay that's what we're here for um miss beth has been collecting that kind of information for all the states uh so if you are wondering if you're in a translating state or if it's available uh if you can't find the information miss beth does have a good you know, 50 state crib sheet and working on it. Sometimes we don't know and we'll research it. Yeah, no, Ohio just says that uh, we, we can use any means to communicate with a client, whether that's translator or even electronic. Okay, the so. next question is coming from Miss Kina. Uh, I got all my fans in here tonight, <laughs> Ronnie. Yeah, this is more of a comment than a question, and it had to do with when you have to pivot to a biometric notary. Keep in mind, a lot of us use this for general notary work, and it's not necessarily um, a signing. So we don't have always that, you know, higher being of a title company that we have to get approval. Um, you know, it may be for an affidavit, it may be for a power of attorney or something like that. Um, in those cases, you know, it, it's, hey, you don't pass, hey, I'm going to find my Virginia notary or Florida notary and see if they can help you. Um, so, you know, it, it's not that we always concentrate on strictly loan packages when we're talking about cyberize it. So um, just kind of keep that in mind that there's always other work available. That's all. Yeah. 
And, you and, and it's, it's a, you know, that that's the thing though. So like Keena's out there trying to build her business. She's brand new to Ron. I am well to performing Ron. I've gotten her to do it, believe it or not. She's done one for me, but um, she doesn't have a big clientele yet. And the soon as she gets someone that, that takes the, takes the lead and says, okay, I'll do it. And they fail their questions on this general notary assignment. Now they're like, well, seriously, why did we even do this? What was worth it? And, and because Keen is now going to say, well, I've got to wait 24 hours before I can notarize that for you now. But now she's got that resource and she can get it done. It may not be her signing. She might not make any money off of it, but she'll get a client out of it because that client will come back. And like I mentioned, once they're in her queue, they always come back to her. So now they're going to be confident in the process and they're going to be secure and they're already going to be trained. So next time it's just going to happen and Kina will get a, a ping and she'll get it, it money. And that's going to make her look better to that brand new client it's because it doesn't look so tedious anymore. You know, this is exactly where I, where I have to interject because you guys know I can't keep my mouth shut for nothing. This is exactly why you want to stick around for the last few minutes of this, even though it won't be on recording. Um, there is a there's a, a whole nother side to that that I want to tell you guys about tonight as soon as we're done with the questions. But I promise you that is a very valid point, and I'm going to be bringing that up once the cameras cut. Unfortunately, I've been threatened to be sued a million times in my life, so I won't do it on my own camera. If you want to film me and put it out there, go ahead. But <laughs> I'll tell you something. I'm not allowing you to do it and it's on my camera saying I'm not allowing it. So uh, we'll go to Miss Carol. We've got a couple of questions in the chat too, Ronnie, that I'm trying to track. Okay. I, I'm watching too, Beth. I see him too. Okay. Hi. I, you probably already said this and I'm sorry if I'm repeating, if you're repeating. For not Arizona notaries and the uh, general notary work, and I just read the new uh, Secretary of State and very threatening language about um, charging anything more than the ten dollars. So, it was it my understanding then that, that using your platform, they pay you, and it doesn't look like I'm charging them. So, that you pay me after I mean the uh -huh. whole thing, and then I get yeah. the money from you, and I don't have to deal with the threatening yeah. <laughs> language. Exactly. From the Secretary exactly. Of State. So, awesome. so let's let's say it's a two stamp document, okay? So. Cyberize it charges the client $46.99. Okay. Of this, I'm, I'm going to take a cut of $12.99. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's $11.99 plus $1 for the second stamp. Sure. You get $34 because my contract with you, my agreement with you, is that I pay you a specific amount for this transaction. And that all relates to how many stamps are on the document, but you never charge the client. I charge the client. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. That, that will also be part of what I'm gonna talk about after the camera stops rolling, so. <laughs> all right. Then Ms. That... I just wanna check the chat. Um, Ms. Carol, yeah, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, Mo had a question a little ways back in the chat. He wanted to know what the Cyberize It system costs and can they do monthly or annually or either? Um, so depending upon your level, which I know Mo is in Georgia, so he would not be able to be a notary on the platform yet because it's not legal there. But a training subscription is $10 a month. And then you can cancel and upgrade to a notary sub subscription when you have clientele and you are legally commissioned in your state. So I'll give you a tip. If you are a Michigan notary, you cannot get commissioned as a RON unless you buy a platform. And if you buy a platform, you have to put all this money out. Well, you could actually buy our training package at $10 and get commissioned and then upgrade when you actually have your legal commission to the the higher paying, uh, higher charging programs. Now you can buy our, pl our platform monthly, quarterly, semi-annually or annually. 
and um, the longer you buy, the cheaper it is. So we all the packages give you the same access, but they um, we try to work with your budget. And you can cancel and upgrade at any time. So if you want to try it for a month and then say, okay, I love it. And then I'm switching to the annual plan so that I save 50%. You can do all of that in your administrative office. One more chat question before we move on to Jody Pope. This is from Star Mosley. She had a question. Um, she's in Tennessee. It said, do we receive a copy of the documents for real estate transactions once they're completed to send to the title company and lender? And does the signer immediately get a copy as well? It's a really good question. It is. So I'm looking for one here. It's, it's giving me. Why is it doing that? Okay, I don't know what it's doing. Anyway, uh, the short end of the stick is you get access to the documents as soon as the transaction's done. As far as the clients go, the answer is that depends. <laughs> if you um, if you're billing through the platform, say it's general notary work. I know that was about loan signing, but general notary work and you enter the number of seals so that it processes the final charge. If their credit card's declined, that client can't get the document. It doesn't go to them. Until they pay for it, they don't get it. So that means you get paid if they get the document every time. So that protects you to make sure that you get your money. But if it's um, a loan signing or a real estate transaction where you're getting paid outside of the platform, there is a way to set it up to where the client doesn't have access to the document unless you send it. We also can set it up to where title can send it to you, just to you. And when the transaction's done, you have access to the document and so does title instantaneously. So you don't even have to email it back to title. So yeah, we, we have lots of customizations in our system. Let's see. Ms. Um, Beth, are we ready for Jody Pope's question? I think we have one more one more chat question and then we'll kind of be uh, caught up a little bit. We'll be within five new messages. Um, does our affiliate link make us for a preferred notary to the client automatically now? Or does the client still select us as their preferred notary in the profile? So if they use your custom reference link, the REF link in your notary profile, then they're instantly assigned to you. There's no, there's no delay. It's instantaneous, even though my email thing didn't work. But um, if they already had a profile, maybe they came to Cyberize it and just created their profile on their own, they can still go into their profile and select someone specifically. And that way they will come to you every single time instead of going to the job board. So. Did that answer your question? And now one thing I do wanna make sure that everyone understands, we offer two different kinds of links on ours. The reference link is for customers to sign up, but we also have an affiliate link where you can, um, refer other notaries and you get a percentage off of their subscription. So every person who signs up gets both. So that's why I wanted to be clear. The customer link is the ref link. The notary referral link is the affiliate link. So. Okay, um, Miss Beth, uh, Miss Jody put her hand down. I sent her a direct message to see if she has any questions. Let's see. I don't see her response there. So we have Julian up next, and then I'd like to cut the questions there because we've been in for an hour and a half. And one thing's for sure, we're not gonna learn everything in one night. I appreciate those who stay with us, but I do have a very important message right after Julian's question that I'm gonna cut the cameras for. And if you are watching the replay and you wanna know what that question is about, go to our blogs and look for a blog that was posted on 9-26-2022. I am definitely going to talk about this with live people um, and you'll see everything there. Uh, Miss Julian, if you have a question, we're ready for you.
Okay, can you hear me? Yep. Oh, and, it, and I apologize. I said Miss Julian, Mr. Julian. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay, bro. Uh, yeah, Amy, you know who I am. I'm actually on your platform. This is Julian. I just wanted a quick question. Is it okay if I give you a call or, or text you tomorrow? I just have a, a question for you personally. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, I appreciate that. So I'm on okay. East Coast time, so it'll probably be sometime around one o'clock in the afternoon. Is that okay? That works. I, I, I have an appointment at 1.30, so. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right. Um, I did I did want to make a mention of something I just saw in the chat, and this is an important feature. Um, I, I was asked, did we provide clients? And the short answer, I, I will never, ever say that we will provide you a steady stream of income. I, I do not want to be responsible for you having enough money to have food on your table at the end of the day. That's not my goal. If you want to be successful and have a good return on your investment as a Ron notary, you need to have the substance. So I consider looking at the, I tell this anal analogy, uh, look like it's a cupcake. Ron is a cupcake. You need to be able to support yourself. You're the cake. Okay. That's your dedicated client base. That's the people that come to you and only you. If you pull something off of our job board, that's just icing. That's extra. We're never going to be your sole source of raw income, but we can definitely be something that you're like, oh, yeah, I've got time for that. I'll do that. So that that's kind of how I look at our aspects. Um, the other thing really quick, Jody, um, Alabama has a Ron law, but it is not actually Ron, it's Ren, and it is something we could work with you on, but I do need to uh, uh, work one-on-one -on -one because it's not, it's not something that I just kind of open up for just Ren notaries. So if you're interested, shoot us an email. So. Ms. Amy, I want to thank you for being here tonight with us, and I want you to stick around and hear this as well. Um, I would like for everybody to turn on their cameras so we can give Ms. Amy our signature wave and give those notaries that are going to watch this after our signature wave. So I'm going to give it just a minute. So please turn on those cameras. If you're naked, keep them off. If you're eating your sandwich right now, we understand. But uh, let's get those cameras on because we love to welcome people here and make sure that they feel welcome. I see those cameras lighting up and you know, if you're driving, we understand. Uh, let's keep those cameras coming on and let's make sure to give our signature wave here. And I see those cameras still lighting up. Miss Beth, how do we say it here at Notary Stars? As you move along your journey, whatever that is, just remember to reach back, grab the notary next to you and bring them along with you. Help somebody out. All right, everybody, I'm going to cut the feed and we're going to get serious for a minute.